I feel like people are using the word racist um, too liberally, and it's undercutting its power and importance. They're using it to describe things that are dumb or awkward or unfortunate that aren't actually racist. And so when we actually do have something that is that actually does fit the definition, we're not, we're, the word has been cheapened. Do you have this concern? Like, I just, I was just reading something about some, some sports podcaster who I like made some stupid joke. Someone called it racist. And I was like, you know, what happened to George Floyd is racism. Exclusionary zoning is racism. Segregation is racism. That was a stupid joke. Like, is it is it a mistake to use the same word to describe two things that have dramatically different impacts on the world, intentions, origins, history? Do we lose sight of what we're talking about? So, yeah, this is a question that I've um, struggled with, you know, partly because, so for me, what I think is important that I think can help this is if we develop, you know, as a human community, a shared and consistent definition of the term racist. So what, what we currently have mm -hmm. is so many different definitions, many of which are just, you know, don't align. Uh, and, and, and I personally, like, so some people say, oh, I think everything is racist. No, I actually don't think everything is racist. I only think an idea is racist if someone is connoting that a particular racial group is inferior or superior. I only think a policy is racist if it's sort of leading to or growing a racial inequity or injustice. And so if, if we were to de develop, and that's why even how to be an anti-racist, I wanted to anchor every chapter on definitions because I, I just think us having mm -hmm. common definitions would allow us to only use the term when it's applicable. And I certainly do think cer the term is used when it's not ac applicable, but I also think it's not used when it is applicable. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense to me. I mean, I, I like that idea of developing a kind of richer and more meaningful vocabulary around things that we find offensive for various reasons. Um, and there's a difference between something that is merely tasteless and something that is um, harmful and dangerous and um, deeply bigoted. Racism is almost like cancer. And I always go back to that analogy, particularly as someone who's, who's battled cancer. In which, you know, cancer is widespread. There is multiple stages of cancer. So there's, you know, stage one, stage two, stage three, stage four. And there's this understanding that stage four is lethal. It's dangerous. It can kill you. You know, stage one, um, you know, it, it's, it's more of something if you don't get a handle on it quickly, it can become lethal and dangerous. So even having this understood gradation that let's say if we do call that more lighter thing racist, but it's understood that it's not stage four, right? So it then allows us to, to speak about and distinguish both. Yeah, yeah. Well, all of this suggests to me, Ibram, that this show you're doing is going to be both fascinating and also really useful um, in the world that we're living in right now. And I, so I want to formally, once again, welcome you to the Pushkin family. I am delighted you're doing this. And um, uh, I'm looking forward to the many great conversations you'll have on the show.